All right, what I think I'll do is just go over at least some of these problems with you. We'll take a quick look at them. You want to try them? That'd be great. You know, again, I don't know what uh, people's, how much time people have, etc. I can understand that. I can appreciate that when people say, well, I got too many other things to do. I, I get that. All right. In fact, let's do it like this. All right, so the first problem, you may or may not agree with this, but it's pretty simple. It says, use jQuery to add the heading, add an H1 heading with the words, this is a heading, not with the, you know, without the double quotes, to the body of an HTML document. And if you take a look up on the screen here, what you're going to see is very similar to one that we did, we took a look at. It's the append command. All right. So that means after the body tag, I want to append, I want you to put in an H1 heading that says this is a heading. So you'll see that if we run this, that's what it does. If I take the line of code that did this, the line of jQuery code, and comment that line out, and then run the program again, you're going to see nothing at all on the screen. All right, because we didn't put any code in the actual HTML file. There's no code in here. So what we did was we said in here, and we could do whatever we wanted to do in here. It doesn't have to be this. You know, we could put a paragraph in here. And it could extend to several lines. And then when I got all done, I'd have to put the ending paragraph tag in there. And now when I run it, of course I probably broke it, probably put in something incorrectly, but let's take a quick look. Oh, it doesn't like all the line breaks in here. So I'd have to end each one of these and put a plus sign and keep doing that. All right, otherwise I could just come in this would be really ugly, but I actually could come in and do this and set it up as though it was one big line. And just keep doing that. longer it is. So that's it. There it is. All right, so it's really easy. You can use the append method to go and add anything you want to a uh, to a web page and you can put it anywhere you want to put it in the web page all right the second one that was here said use jQuery to create some borders so in other words I put five h1 headings in here and what we said here was the first one should have a two pixel solid red border in fact all of them should by default all right. Then we said the first one should have a two pixel green border. The second one should have a two pixel blue border. 
The last one should have a purple border. Why would I even waste your time and have you do that? All right. And the reason is, when you look at this, you can see some of the things that are in here. This says, this line that you see highlighted says, take all H1 tags and add CSS to them. The CSS we want is we want to add a border, in particular a two pixel solid red border. So you'll notice if you saw the way this looked when it ran, or maybe I didn't run it, so I'll run it right now. All right, you see there's a green, there's a blue, there's a bunch of reds, and there's a purple. But this line here said by default make everything red. So if I go back and I comment out each one of these, you'll see how this changes. It's all red now, because that's the default. That's what we told it to do. All right. But then we said, okay, come up to the first one. Remember this, H colon, H1 colon first means the first one that's in there. And now that first one, we want it to have a two pixel solid green border. So if we run this again, now the first one should change to be green. And it does. All right. Then we go to the next one. And notice what it says. It says H1 colon EQ1. Fortunately or unfortunately, some of, some of the stuff that you do in jQuery starts at zero, and some of it starts at one. I don't know why they're dead, they've done that. But this says the next one, not first, but one, because it's going to start at zero, make that blue. So when we did this, by default, everything was red. Then we just said change the first one. Now we're saying change the second one to blue. All right. And then finally, we're saying grab the last paragraph and give that a two pixel solid purple border. So you'll notice that when we run that one, now when I refresh, this one should change to purple. And it does. Just so you can start seeing some of the ways that you can count to do different things in here. The third one then, this says use jQuery to, hi to create two hyperlinks, one that says show text, one that says high text, high text rather, to either show or hide a paragraph's text. Well, again, that's pretty simple. There's the paragraph, there's the link that says show text, there's the link that says high text, and, whoops. If you click on the one that says show, show everything that's in there. Otherwise, hide everything that's in there. So show text, there it is. Hide text, it's gone. Now we didn't put a toggle in it. We're going to put a toggle in for a later one, but hopefully that makes sense as far as what's going on in there. One thing about this is it's real easy with jQuery to overdo it. In other words, you have a... You have a uh, you create a website and you put animation on it and hides and slides and all you do is you put so much stuff in there that you inundate or you just it's like you you take you the person looking at your site and you're hitting them over the head with a sledgehammer you're giving them way too much information there is an information overload so could you use all this stuff sure you probably wouldn't use all of it on the same page but you might use different things on different pages All right, the next one, number four. Again, doing the same thing as we did before, but instead of doing a show and a hide, we're doing a fade in and a fade out. And there's another little caveat, little thing that we put on the end of this also, but just so you can see it. So this is number four. All right, so you'll notice how the text fades in or how the text fades out, all right? And you'll notice that afterwards I've got this alert that comes up, and it comes up both on here, and it says, done fading in, and it comes in on here, and it says done fading out, all right? And I want to show you the code that does that, and that's right here, all 
right? So what we're doing here is we're telling it to do a fade in, and we're telling it to do it in four over four seconds. Then notice if we want to, we can put in this. This is called a callback function. And what that means is when the function right here, when this click events function, when it gets done running, then run this function. So when you're all done, give me an alert that says done fading in. When you're all done fading out, give me an alert that says done fading out. And this is a simple example, but you can use callback functions. You never have to. But a lot of times you use a callback function to let the end user know that something is starting or something is stopping. Number five, then. Number five says, bless you, use jQuery, add five paragraphs to a text, to, you know, to a document. When the user hovers over a paragraph, make the color of the paragraph turn to black. Again, not, not hard to do, doesn't take much code. There it is, but when we look at it, you look up on the screen here, this is one that you probably could use in a site. So whatever the current paragraph is, notice we're doing a reverse type of image on it. So instead of being a white paragraph with black text, it's now a black paragraph background with white text. And the way we do that simply is here. We tell it to toggle the class called highlight. Well, what's that? All right. Well, if we open that up, it's in a CSS file. We're telling it to set the background 000, which is black, and the text color to FFFFFF. Just so you know, to say 000 like this, that's the same thing as saying 000000. And to say three Fs like this is the same thing as saying it here. There. That'll work too. So you can use six digits when they're all the same, or you can use three. It doesn't matter. But all I'm saying is, Turn on this. So make the background black and the text color white. When I when I highlight when I mouse over it, when I get out, that turn it off. Then for number six. Use jQuery to create a hyperlink with the words click here to toggle to fade in or fade out a paragraph of, paragraph rather, of text. You've seen this already. So clicking once makes it disappear. Clicking again makes it reappear. All right. And number seven says this is a combination of numbers four and six. Add three hyperlinks to a page, one that says click here to slide up, one that says click here to slide down, and one that says click here to toggle. All right. When you're done, add a callback function to say that it's complete. Click here to slide up. Click here to slide down, click here to toggle, and the toggle has a done with it. So you can use any of these three to go back and forth. And again, when you take a look at the associated text, there's not a lot of it in there. We can set this, again, to either slow or to fast. 
or to normal, or we can put a number in there. And if we put nothing in there, it defaults, I think, to half a second, which is 500 milliseconds. This is how we want it to fade in. This is in a linear manner. You can have it fade in in other ways, too. So you can do special effects, like a bounce type of thing if you want. There's a few other things that you can do, too. And again, here's an example. We put that callback function on the end right there. But again, the whole thing is 15 lines of code. Not very much code at all. So that's number seven. Number eight, create a div that's a box and have this box have the words hello student in it. Then add four hyperlinks. Grow the box, which will make it increase to a size of 500 pixels. Move a box, which will move it to the right by 100 pixels. Increase font size. So every time you click that button, the, the text inside of the box should increase by one pixel. And one that says do all three at once, which does everything. So grow the box, move the box, increase the font size, and then click the button that says do all three at once to do everything. So you can see there's a bunch of animation effects that are going on here. And if we look at the code, again, not a whole boatload of code. We're saying when you click the grow button, have it change to 500 pixels in size. And do it over one second. When we tell it to move, we say move margin left, which means push it to the right by 100 pixels and have that take a second. Font size, we're just increasing it to 30 pixels. I could have done it by one pixel. I guess I said that. Do that over a second. And this, do many things, just combines everything that's in here, in here, and in here into one line. All right, last two here. Number nine. All right. Number nine says create five paragraphs with a bunch of junk in it, and this was designed to show you append and prepend. Easiest just to run this to show it to you. If you look up on the screen here, every time I click append, watch what happens to the end of the paragraph here. Every time I click prepend, watch what happens to the last paragraph right here. So prepend adds something to the beginning, append adds it to the end. And again, if we look at the code that's in here, not a lot of code, that's it. So we're saying here what we want to do is append, so put at the end of the first paragraph appended text with the blank space before it and afterwards. This says for the last paragraph, when you click it, you want to prepend, so you want to put it at the beginning. Again, with the blank spaces. And then finally, for number 10, create four hyperlinks with add class, remove class, toggle class, increase size, one, two, three, four. I, I guess I can't count. So it looks like that's five hyperlinks. All right. But if we run this, there's the five paragraphs. Every time you click Add Class, notice the text color changes red. Remove, gets removed. Toggle turns it on and turns it off. Every time I click Increase Font Size, watch the paragraph. It gets bigger. It gets one point bigger font. Every time I click Decrease, one point smaller font. Eventually it gets so small that you can't even see it. And again, you can bring it back. 
But again, the key thing to this is look at the code. All right. It says for what? We've got this thing for adding a class of color that adds the red. So if we want to add our own class, we use add class. If we want to remove an existing class, it's remove class. If we want to toggle a class back and forth, it's toggle class. This says, for the first paragraph, increase the font size by one pixel, plus equals one px. This says, for the first paragraph, decrease the font size by one pixel, minus equal one px. All right? So just to get you thinking about this, for lack of better words. All right, what I'm going to ask that everybody does, we're just about finished, but what I'm going to ask you to do, first I'm supposed to tell you, there are, they're having a bread competition today in the cafeteria. It's free. They have all sorts of different breads that you can taste, or you can purchase them, but you can taste as many as you want for free, but you have to vote for the ones you like the most. There will also be brownie and turtle sundaes with homemade ice cream. Okay, there you go. All right. The last thing that I do want to mention, though, is if you go out to here, maybe you've heard of this before, maybe you've not. There is a site that's called htmlboilerplate.com. All right? And if you go out to it, it's got a whole bunch, and that's wrong because it's HTML5 boilerplate, so that's just going to sit there and spin. All right. If you go out to this site, and this is what we're going to do in the next class, we're going to download this. We're going to talk about what's in here. We're not going to look at the video. But we're going to look at what's in there. And if you download it, you've got your choice of what you want. Okay, there's a bunch of different stuff that's in here. We're going to talk about the stuff that's in here. And we're going to create a very, when I say very, it'll be very, very simple site. It's going to have three pages in it. It's going to have a home page, it's going to have an about page, and it's going to have a contact page. All right, we're going to use that then as the basis as we go in and start to create our own class website. All right, now what I will tell you when we're working on this is hey, we're doing this, I'm going to do it in front of you, but I'm not saving it out there. You have to do it, you have to save it, you have to turn it in as we go on in here, because that'll be your last assignment, will be this website that we're going to create over several class periods as a class. All right? Any questions? All right, that's all that I had.